Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm, um, I'm Anka Luca from XWiki, and I would like to talk to you about um, XWiki. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about XWiki. Now, um, this talk is called From Zero to Intranet in the 20 Minutes. The zero is that I don't even have slides. It's uh, going to be demo-based. Um, if we can all join hands uh, to summon the energy of the gods to make this not fail, it would be amazing. So what I wanted to show you is um, maybe just a few words about myself. I'm an engineer. I think that's how you call my job. Uh, and today I'm solutions architect at a company that uh, does, uh, produces open source code and provides services um, for this open source code, which is XWKSIS. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do was to build a cheap intranet out of an open source platform, which is XWiki. And uh, I wanted to imagine that uh, we have a company, like a small, medium size, no, small, it would be small because it would be around maybe 40 or 50 people, uh, just enough to want to go out of a Word document. Uh, in terms of uh, knowledge sharing, and uh, not uh, not enough in order to not enough to go to uh, like a fully fledged solution with uh, lots of bells and whistles and really really expensive. So what I want to to take as a use case is the use case of a um, group of people producing jam, like um, jam to spread on bread in the morning. Um, and uh, I imagine that uh, we'd have these people that have the knowledge about their job and have all sorts of work that they need to do together, and they need to not lose the knowledge of what they are doing. They want to share stuff about their job. So I'm going to transform XWiki in an intranet in 20 minutes. Go. Um, first, we go on the XWiki website. We click Download, and then we can download here the XWiki version. I'm not going to do it now. It's about 300 megabytes. It's going to be too long. But I already have done that on my local instance, and I have a virgin XWiki here. <coughs> this is what happens when you first start XWiki. It, takes, uh, it like has this uh, loading stuff, but it's only the first time when you start it because it initializes everything. And what we're going to see is the home page. Oh, God. Uh, sorry. It's, it went in responsive mode because the screen is so small. This is better. This is, can you see the text? You can see the text. OK. So this is what XWiki looks like out of the box. It's, an XWiki it's a wiki engine. So you can create content, pages. You can also create some structured data, which is the feature that we will use in order to turn this into a more uh, uh, job-oriented, like uh, an expert-oriented solution. So normally, it's a wiki. You have a home page. You can create uh, some pages. I should probably log in. It could help. Yeah, admin, admin. Um, so um, you can, you can, uh, you have pages. You don't see the whole. I'm going to make it smaller so that you see. So basically, on a normal screen, you would see it a bit like this in terms of like global layout. But I'm going to make it bigger so that we can actually read the text. Um, you can modify pages. You have an editor. You can do text, and then you can do saving of the changes that you've done. So far, nothing surprising, nothing uh, different from what you would be used to. Uh, when it comes to a wiki. You can already use it like this uh, for an internet because you, you already have uh, a place to put uh, content, a place to uh, create users, put them in groups, and give, give rights to the people. For example, if you go to the administration, you can actually create a user already. There's already the admin, and you can create a user, for example, uh, the um, Ross Berry. Uh, OK. And we create a user. Now we have a new user. This guy can now log in and use the wiki himself as well. So this already exists. You already have this in the platform. You don't need to do anything in order to have that. So we can do content, but we want to take it further than this. For example, we want to be able to handle um, news. We want to announce things to people, to make blog articles and things like that. So. We're going to go in the extensions area of the wiki, which is the interesting part. And we're going to start installing applications in order to add extra features to this platform. So um, 
I'm going to do a trick because normally they come from the internet, but here internet is not the best place to go to. So I downloaded them locally and I'm going to try to install them from the local uh, um, folder. So I have a blog application that I can install. Ah, I'm going to cut the internet of this because it's resolving everything on the internet and it should resolve it in local. Now I have it. Okay. Yes, we should have hold, held hands under the rainbow in order to make the demo work because apparently... No, it's not going to time out. It's just a bit longer. So now I have a blog application, and if I go to the home page or refresh the page, I will see it here in the list of applications. So I have a blog. I can, and I can create a blog article here. For example, apricots, uh, sorry, in English is apricot with a P, are here. Because we're creating jam, so it would be interesting for people to know that uh, apricots are here. I have lots of features in this. I can add an image in my blog post. Uh, here, upload. The screen is incredibly small. I don't see anything on it. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so we have this. Send to the server. OK. We have an image. I can then select this image as being the... The, the display image of my blog post, it's a news, and I will also publish my blog post. I'm going quickly through this. Uh, you can go into the detail of the applications just to show you that this actually, um, this, um, this actually works like this. So you have a, we have a blog, we have the list of all the blog posts here, and so on. This job is done. Now we can have somebody that publishes blog posts for people to see on this intranet. Next step is... We are thinking about, OK, we have regular pages. We're going to create content. What we want to do is we want to put meeting notes. Because in any company, any group of people that work together, we're going to have meetings. And we want to put the notes. So what I'm going to do is that I'm, I could actually use regular pages for, uh, for the meeting notes. But I can also install an extension in the same way. I can install an extension that would allow me to handle better my meeting notes because I will be able to have it in the list of applications. I have the list of all my meetings here. So far, there's none. And for example, I can say that I want to make a sales meeting uh, February 2020. And I have lots of uh, metadata, like structured metadata about these meetings. Normally, I would have like a regular text page and I would just type text. I have a structured version of the, of the page. This is a feature. This is a core feature of XWiki, being able to have structured stuff in your wiki besides regular wiki pages. So I can, I can use these applications to make my data more meaningful and to be able to, uh, to handle it better. As you can see, all the work is already done. So I have these beautiful forms. They have all the controls that I need. I don't need to work to do any of this, basically. And it's free because it's, uh, I almost said uh, it's free because it's open source. It's free because it's free, and the open source is, uh, is another thing. So let's say that Ross Berry is the leader of this meeting, and the meeting is in preparation. Normally, I would say here what we need to talk about. And I can put the notes in here. Okay, I have my meeting, and now I have a list of all the meetings that are here. Because the data is structured, and this is very important, because the data is structured, I can actually, yeah, demo effect. Sorry for that. Uh, because the data is structured, I can actually uh, do this filtering, this very precise filtering of the metadata of the data that I put in. If the data wasn't structured, just text, I would never be able to filter by status here, for example, to have a table of all the data and, and have them filtered precisely by uh, a certain value of the metadata. So uh, I forgot uh, what else I wanted to show you. As I think I wanted to show you the task manager. Um, no, not users, extensions, still extensions. So, come on.
So now I have also a task manager and it also appears here in the list of applications. So the task manager kind of is the same as the meeting. You have a structure, you have a table of all the, of all the, all the tasks. You, when you create a new task, for example, create a social media strategy, um, you can assign it to somebody, you can add a priority to it, you can, actually it's high priority, uh, it's in to-do, you can have an assignee for it, and everything. So now I have the list of all my tasks and, uh, and, uh, and I can see them here, I can filter them because the data is structured. So there's lots of things that are already done like this that you can use and you can install. There's an ideas application for people to add ideas. There's a bunch of uh, human resources applications such as um, holiday request application and the recruitment application. I also wanted to show you that but I'm a bit out of time now so I'm gonna go quickly. So this basically allows you, for example, the human resources application allow you to have some structuring of the, of the work that you do, like not only send emails between people, oh, I want to go to holidays. Sure, go to holidays. It's, it, it can work by email, but you want it to have, a, to have it a little bit more structured. And what you would want also is to kind of save money and, and, not, uh, and not spend money on one solution for each of the, of the needs of your, of your small to medium company. Uh, what's very interesting here is that as soon as I create content in the wiki, it's automatically searchable because that's how the wiki works. So, for example, if I look for social media now, I will actually find the task that I have just created. So it's not separate data, it's, it's data like any other data in the wiki and as soon as I put data in, in there, it is indexed by the solar engine and I have this powerful thing that allows me to search everything that I have in terms of knowledge. Um, so far so good, but it looks ugly, right? We want to give it like a, like a, like a beautiful colors of, a, of, a, of, a, of a peach workers, of a, sorry, jam workers. So I'm gonna go to the color themes. I'm going to copy this default color theme, which is the one being used. And I will create a new one called Abricot because this is the name of my company. Do, can you still see the text? It would be so much more comfortable for me to see the actual size of the screen. Thank you very much. And basically, I'm going to edit this color theme, so it's really, really easy to make it your own, like to customize it and color it to make it look exactly like you want. For example, I will use, I think this is the logo that I built yesterday, sorry, that we paid a company to build, I will change some colors to make it more white. I will put my links, I will make them orange, for example, more orange, more orange, and I will also change the color of the navigation bar up there. So the navigation bar, we're gonna make it white I may be going extremely quickly, but what I want to show you is that it is possible to do this really quickly, uh, not how exactly will you do it when you will do it. You'll probably spend a little bit more time finding the buttons, but um, link color, hover color, no, white is not good because we won't be able to read it. Still some orange. I can actually copy this orange. It's so much easier. There. And uh, this is also ugly. We're going to make it white. Sure. Okay, let's go. Save and view. So far, I, it's still looking as it looked before because I didn't set the wiki to use this color theme. So I'm going to go to the administration. And in the theme section, I will choose the abrico color theme. Save. And now my wiki is orange. Uh, like using the colors that I wanted to use. Um, what I also want to do at this point is, okay, I don't like these panels. They don't represent what I want to see. I don't care about these tips. I don't care about these things and my homepage is ugly. So what I will do is that I will also, I will also go to the administration. I can actually handle all this, um, these applications here. I'm going to remove some of them. For example, I don't care about the help. I don't care about the sandbox. 
I want blog, I want the dashboard at the end, blog meetings task manager dashboard. I save this and I can also say that I want these panels to be a small column and I will move the navigation over here and remove all this stuff. Uh, tip, uh, and I will read the uh, tips. I want to remove it. Sorry, to the middle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, of course they're already there, but I want them to disappear from the right panel. Okay, no worries. It's at the end. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. What I wanted to show you is that without any coding whatsoever, what I managed to do is that Okay, fixed it, sorry, quick, really quick. So without any coding, what I managed to do is to give it a, a, a look and feel that corresponds to my company, to handle the applications that I wanna see here, to make it a, a little bit easier to work on. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work basically on the, on the homepage. What I wanna do about the homepage is I wanna just remove all this content and make it my own. What's interesting is that I can actually include another page in here and I'm going to include the dashboard. So I'm gonna make it display. I can use macros, this is a feature of the, um, of the, um, of the wiki. I can use macros in order to say that I, I want to use, I want to show in this page another page. So right now, I have a beautiful dashboard with the pages of my wiki and with the activity stream of my wiki. There's also notifications included in this, so I have a notifications panel here, I can configure email notifications. Whenever there's a change on the wiki, I get notifications by email and so on, which is something that you may want uh, when you do an intranet because you want to know what's happening, you want to know, uh, uh, you want to know what, what's, what's happening on your wiki and how it works. I'm going to show you now two features that are interesting features of the XWiki platform that help you make this intranet really your own. Because we installed some applications, but there will never be an application, for example, or maybe there will not be an application in order to define the, uh, for example, the jam recipes that we wanna use. Because um, we have some, like, some specific data, some specific knowledge about our job of making jam. So what's interesting is with XWiki is that you can create your own application. We saw the meeting application, we saw the task manager, but we can also create one that corresponds exactly to what I want it to be. I go here, I create an application. Um, this feature is called app within minutes. I think this is exactly what is left out of this presentation, minutes. So let's try to make it in minutes. So jam recipes, I'm gonna call it the recipes. I think it's written like that. And what I want here, for example, is I will want a name of the here. I will want a name. I'm going to call this name. Um, I will want uh, an actual uh, recipe itself because we're not going to structure the, the data about the recipe. It's still going to be text, but we want to add some interesting metadata. For example, what we want is we would want to know to... We, to which season this recipe applies. So I'm adding here a property in my application, a metadata of type uh, list, and I'm going to define here a summer. Um, I'm going to define spring. And I'm going to define autumn. And I'm going to remove these default choices is it on? It's on. I'm going to remove some default choices. <coughs> what I also want to do, so right now this is um, done. What I also want to do is, for example, I want to say that one user of my internet, so one member of my company, is the expert of that recipe. So what I will do, I will add a property of type user. I will call it expert. And uh, that's it. It should do the job. What I will do also is to move the content to the end because this actually defines the order that I'm gonna see in my form. I'm gonna move it here, come on, at the end. I can configure a bunch of stuff in this application. I'm not gonna do it now because it's long and I only have minutes. 
Um, and for example, I'm going to add in my, in my table of data on the home page, I'm going to add the season and remove the location. So this allows me to configure that table of, uh, of existing data that we saw. I can choose an icon for my stuff. Is there any fruit here? Uh, no, but this is the closest to nature that I have. Let's go. I have an application. It took me, shit, the, all, the whole three minutes. So now I have my own application that I see here. And for example, I can add apricot jam. And the metadata that I have defined is here. Uh, I'm going to call Ross an expert. He's an expert in anything. Uh, here is going to be the story of the recipe. You will understand what I'm, why I'm typing text. I'm saving. I have my data here that is displayed structured. And as I said before, magically everything is in. So if I look here for best apricot jam, I will find my recipe that I have just defined. So basically, sorry, Alina, I just saw that. So basically, with, with a couple of extensions that I have installed, stuff that I have defined, and, and still I didn't show you all the stuff that XWiki can do, I have an internet. I have a place for the people that work together to put all their data and to find it really easily, and also get spammed by email when it gets updated, because that's what we all work for, spam. Thank you. Are there? So we have, we have three minutes for questions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, can you attach an approval workflow to, um, to that form? Uh, actually, there is an extension that is called Workflow that does this. Oh, sorry, I need to repeat the question. The question was, can I attach an approval workflow? Uh, we, the feature is not in the wiki itself, in the platform, in the wiki platform itself, because wiki is about everybody contributing. Uh, but yes, there's an extension that is called Publication Workflow, if you're interested, uh, and it does exactly that. It does uh, stuff that gets published only when, uh, only when somebody signs off. Yes? Uh, does it support the integration to Active Directory? Yes. So the question is whether it supports integration and Active Directory. It was in the list of stuff in the pitch about what I will show you. I didn't show you, but in the extensions, so just as I installed Blog and Task Manager, you can actually install plugins that will delegate the authentication of the wiki in, uh, like with a known protocol, like OpenID, uh, LDAP, and things like that. Yeah, which infrastructure do I need to host it? Yeah. The, which infrastructure do I need to host it on? Uh, it is Java, so you will need a uh, container for, for Java. Uh, it's called an um, application server for Java. I have seen it used mostly with Tomcat, but I guess you can put any other, any other one. A relational database, I have seen it used more, mostly with MySQL, but also with PostgreSQL and also with Oracle because people do that. Uh, and Microsoft SQL, I think I saw it used with that. Um, and we usually put um, um, an HTTP server like an Apache or an Nginx in front of that, in front of that Tomcat. So you will need this stack, basically. And then in terms of machine, I think it needs to start at about, the CPU is more or less important because there's not much processing. What you will care for the most is the RAM, basically. You will need the RAM and you will need maybe a couple of gigabytes of disk space and a couple of maybe two gigabytes of RAM, but you can also make it run on less depending on how many people you're going to have on that. And there is a Debian package? Uh, there's a Debian package and the Docker, uh, I forgot the name of the Docker stuff. What is it called, the Docker? Okay. Image, Docker image, to test that. Yes? Uh, is there a way to install the extensions uh, like in, in the installation process rather than through the active wiki? Is there a way to install the extensions within the installation process rather than through the wiki? Uh, no. No, there's no checkboxes at the install time, but you can actually make that happen. It's not that hard. To make it, uh, actually, the, the UI that we saw initially, the blue UI, that also is not installed out of the box. When you first open you, your wiki, you have a wizard. I didn't show you that wizard, but you normally have it. You have a wizard that asks you what do you want on your wiki. So if you want to make your own type of packages that you would distribute, you can also do that. And by default, it would install your packages, which contain also some extensions, uh, not the default one, and then you have to do it manually. Any other question? Okay. Yes? What's the purpose of the 
What is the purpose of the sandbox application? Uh, we deliver it by default with a default UI. As I said, this default UI is just what the Xwiki standard project has chosen to deliver, but you can make your own uh, default stuff. Uh, the purpose is for people to try out, for example, the modification of pages and the syntax. Uh, like how does it work, what you can do, the macros, the thing, without actually touching any serious content. It's a playground, it's a playground yes. It's a, it's a playground, indeed. Thank you very much.